Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and we've had a few long videos lately, so this one will be a little bit short. We're just going over the most recent Overwatch PTR patch notes, because eh, they're, ki they're kind of significant. It's not earth-shattering like some previous PTR patches have been, but it's relevant enough that I think that there are interesting things that people can glean from it. And in particular, there are some very strange mechanical changes and weird options that I've seen a lot of players confused with, so we'll be going over that. First though, we will go, well, we'll go in order from top to bottom, right? Genji received a buff. It's like a non-buff buff, but it's still, it's like a quality of life change. When he climbs a wall, he has no more recovery time, so the moment his wall climbing animation finishes, you can make an action. This will, of course, help Genji pushing high ground areas, like if a Widowmaker's up there, a soldier, he can just wall climb up and have a little bit more of a jump than he normally would have. Now, it is technically a buff. I don't think that many games or matches will be influenced by this change at all, but hey, it's there. It makes it, even Blizzard said, it's mostly just to make the hero feel better, not necessarily for balancing him one way or the other. Next we have Hanzo. So while his brother maybe didn't get that much, he, Hanzo, got a pretty significant buff. So first of all, the most obvious one is his charge speed on the bow is increased by 10%. This of course intuitively will increase his long term over time DPS by 10% over the course of a fight. And I think that's very appropriate. I think that Hanzo's DPS was a little bit on the low side before compared to how un inconsistent it is compared to like a soldier, for example. Hanzo always had the thing going for him where, well, he has a lot of burst damage, but in exchange for that, he doesn't do as much sustained consistent damage. But then you also had to factor in the fact that it wasn't actually consistent damage to begin with, so that trade-off was not fair. So 10% slap that on, why not? He also got another pretty interesting change actually, and I think this one is more relevant. It sounds similar to Genji's change, but it's more relevant I think. So if you charge your bow and you wall climb, it holds the charge. So the moment you're done wall climbing, you just have a fully charged bow, for example, and just kill him. This will increase the viability of wall climb in general with Hanzo and his mobility because before, I mean, yeah, he had a wall climb, but you can never push into someone because if you climb the wall, you climb the wall, you have to charge your bow, and you're dead. All right, cool. I think that on certain maps, Hanzo was already pretty borderline, like, ah, yeah, he, he's pretty good, he's okay, he's almost good, and this probably pushed him over the edge of, okay, this, this hero is actually pretty good on certain maps, and we can go over that in a later, uh, at a later date. Next is Orissa. So Orissa is changed again. So we've been seeing this same philosophy in balancing, and it's something that's a bit concerning, but still we have a long way to go. So it's it's not necessarily something that's showing a longer trend. What am I talking about? Well, they reduced her damage and increased her shielding ability because they reduced the cooldown of her shield by 33% from 12 seconds to eight seconds. That's a pretty insane decrease. So let's actually talk a little bit more about this because there's more than is just on the surface here. So we've actually talked about this before with cooldowns, but Protective Barrier had a 12 second cooldown. It's now eight seconds on the PTR. Cool, 33%, all right. That might seem okay, you think, but we have to really think about the scope, right? What was the downtime on average? I would say that on average, against a coordinated team, an Orisa shield would usually have about a six second downtime. Like you drop the shield, it would live for like six to eight seconds, and then it would go down, they would kill it, and then she was vulnerable for another for a good four to six seconds. Well, they just reduced the cooldown by four seconds. So this downtime has basically been reduced to like zero to two seconds. They've reduced the downtime by 80% upwards of. That is an incredible, insane, ridiculous buff to the protective barrier. So don't be fooled. 33% cooldown reduction is basically a 90% reduction in the actual downtime of the ability. There will be almost no downtime on Arista Shield now. In, in exchange, she got a 15% reduction on damage to her gun, her just regular left click. And that's pretty severe, so her left click was kind of borderline, like, oh, this does a good amount of damage, but not really. And I think with the 15%, she's going to be kind of hitting you like a teddy bear now. And we've already seen some of the cheesy tank comps that Orisa can actually enable. We've seen it just a little bit with Torbjorn and Orisa. That's, that's just the tip of the iceberg, guys. We've only had this hero for a couple weeks, right? 
imagine, or like a month, whatever. Imagine if we had another year to develop her, all this crazy stuff we could do, and now her barrier is basically always up forever. So I think that this is a very aggressive liberal change to Arissa. One that I'm rather surprised by. It feels like Arissa was not necessarily underpowered before. I think she was like okay-ish, she was fine and we haven't had her for very long. And so I think it's gonna be more boring to play her now because you're doing less damage, and it's definitely going to be way less fun to play against her now because you're shooting into more shields and nobody likes shooting into shields. So I thought it was interesting, I thought it was interesting. I think we're gonna get some uh, disgusting cheese and some crazy tank strats coming out of this Orisa change. So I'm, I'm interested to see what comes of it, but I think that whatever it is will probably not be very enjoyable to play against. Next up, Reaper. This is by far, remember how I said the Genji buff was like a non-buff buff? It was like, yeah, it was, it's okay, it's a quality of life. This thing is even, this is even less of a buff. It looks pretty good on the surface. Oh, Wraith form, refills your ammo. Okay, that sounds like a buff, but it really saves you probably 200 milliseconds. Because remember, you can cancel Reaper's Reload into a Wraith form. And how long does it take Reaper's Reload? About, it's in the it's in the area of 200 to 400 milliseconds, not even a full second. We're talking extremely, extremely low amounts of time. So basically, this is another quality of life change. You just don't have to reload before Wraith form anymore. It does it for you automatically, but it is not a buff. This one was intended to be a buff in the developer comments. Uh, Blizzard said that this will help him escape better and not worry about people chasing him and running out of bullets and stuff, but it is not. It is not. It's disguised as a buff, but it's really just a quality of life change. I'm looking forward to some Reaper buffs in the future. Now this isn't going to be a Reaper Theorycraft changes video, but just I'm going to throw one thing out there. I think that increasing his mobility would be, first of all, way, way fun. That would be super cool to play Reaper with more mobility. Plus, I think that's the right path to go. He does enough damage, he is survivable enough, well, gotta let him get there better because he has a really hard time getting there. You know, just low, you know, maybe lower the duration of his teleport. Maybe give him a little more speed boost while he has Wraith form on. You know, something like that. Something along those lines. I'll let you guys theorycraft it and discuss it among yourselves in the comments. Reinhardt, Earth Shatter. You know, I would almost, I would just kind of even qualify. It's not actually a bug fix, but I would qualify this as a bug fix. It's basically just preventing Earth Shatter from being Air Shatter. It still Air Shatters you pretty hard. Like, two meters above the ground is still not too shabby. Don't, go, don't get me wrong, but the three meter and then it would climb three meters up and then hit you six meters up, that was uh, probably not intended. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this a bug fix. It's just gonna reduce the number of air shatters as they've been termed from Reinhardt. And that's where an earth shatter creeps up an object like a vine and then hits you three meters up. So you can be fair like 10, 15 meters up off the ground and still get earth shattered. Well, no more. Last but not least, we have what's probably I would consider the headliner change of the patch, and that's the Soldier 76 nerf. And so I think the people are underestimating this nerf a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. What is the change? Well, they reduced his damage by one. That's right, a whole one. That's one less damage you're doing per bullet. And so we've already talked about this before, of course. Remember before when he was buffed initially a while back, they brought him from 18 damage per bullet, to 20 damage per bullet. And of course the significance in that is that it hit a break point. So at 20 damage a bullet, it only takes five headshots to kill a 200 health hero. That's less than a second. If you factor in the favor of the shooter and the ping and all that, you only have like 400 milliseconds by the time you first register the hit on you to the soldier kills you, essentially. Of course with only 19 damage per bullet, you need six shots and well, that's really not that much more, it is one more bullet, or rather if it's body shots, then you need two more shots. And so this functionally increases soldiers' time to kill by 20%, that's right. One damage decreases his damage in a way by 20%. Of course, it's situational, but essentially, this is reverting the buff initially. 18 damage soldier is exactly identical to 19 damage soldier in 99% of cases. So basically they reverted the buff to him. He's going to be the same as he was before he was buffed. And if you remember back then in the long t on the, <laughs> the long ago age, he wasn't this dominant monster he is today. Now, there are a few factors that have 
brought him into the meta besides just that buff alone. And we could talk about that for really tons and tons of time. But I think that Soldier 76 will actually be pretty well in line with the other with the other DPS heroes like McCree and stuff. I think this nerf is more significant than people think it is. It's not a huge thing. It's not going to kill soldiers. It's not going to prevent the soldier mains from being soldier mains, right? And let me tell you, pro players are not going to stop playing soldier because they know how to play soldier and one damage isn't going to stop them. But in the long term, after a while, eventually, Soldier's pick rate will slowly, slowly, slowly go down, just like Anna's is kind of doing. Slowly, 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 as people kind of let go, you know, of, of the hero they've been playing for so long. Because, uh, you know, the other DPS will be relatively balanced along with it. So, I, I just ask you to not underestimate this nerf. It's not big, but it's bigger than you might think. Especially when you factor in the fact that they're buffing Hanzo, I'm sure they'll be buffing Reaper in the future. And so, with all of that, I'm sure Soldier will be uh, just fine after a while, just fine. So anyway guys, that is all we have for the changes, besides the bug fixes and stuff, and you can check that out yourself. I'll link the full change log in the comments below. Never forget to stay positive, and have a great day. See you soon.